we're moving along uh, knowing what the outcome will be. And uh, um, as I said earlier, and I probably shouldn't repeat it, but I find this uh, more embarrassing for the country than debilitating for my ability to get started. In addition to Joe Biden, former First Lady Michelle Obama spoke out today on the president's refusal to concede. She wrote this in part, and we quote, This isn't a game, so I want to urge all Americans, especially our nation's leaders, regardless of party, to honor the electoral process and do your part to encourage a smooth transition of power, just as sitting presidents have done throughout our history. We're pleased to have back with us again tonight Jason Johnson, a campaign veteran and journalist, contributor to the GRIO and a professor of politics at Morgan State University. Go Bears. And John Meacham, Pulitzer Prize winning author and presidential historian, happens to be the Rogers Chair in the American Presidency at Vanderbilt, unofficial advisor to President-elect Joe Biden. He and his book, The Soul of America, by the way, are the subject of a superb new HBO documentary of the same name. Gentlemen, we welcome you both. Jason, keeping in mind things like the Florida recount and how that pushed back the calendar, uh, how much real damage do you reckon is being done by Donald Trump's refusal to concede? Brian, here's the most dangerous part. We don't know. Right. We, we have no idea because the, the problem is when we have these delays, you never really know how much of a problem it is until that next person gets into office. Uh, you know, we talk about what happened at 9-11. Also, remember the first 100 days of the Bush administration, uh, you had a, a, an airplane go down in China and they had to find information and it came back in 100 different parts. We have no idea what kinds of threats could be building both domestic and international, while Donald Trump sort of fiddles with the, the, with, with the numbers and the information and doesn't want to share it. So that's the most dangerous thing. In the best case scenario, it is just inconvenient. In the best case scenario, it is just him embarrassing himself. But if we are facing a potential terror attack, if we are facing some financial crisis, if we are facing some mutation of COVID, and the Biden administration can't get their hands on the proper documentation, six months from now, we can be talking about how this delay was absolutely tragic and really damaged the country. John, throw on the pile of questions you get asked as a historian. Have we ever had a true four-year-long uh, kind of shadow government resistance in waiting that resists all governments not affiliated with Trump and all versions of the Republican Party that have not yet sold out to Trump? No, we, we are in uh, genuinely uncharted waters here, and that's not, some, that's not a phrase uh, we use much because mo most waters are charted uh, in some way or another. But uh, e the closest analogy we, there is is that Andrew Jackson uh, in 1824 won the popular vote, plurality, did not win the Electoral College. It went to the House of Representatives. Uh, John Quincy Adams and Henry Clay cut a deal. Henry Clay became Secretary of State, which was the way to become president then. And Jackson then created a kind of uh, 19th century hashtag. It was called corrupt bargain. But here's what happened. He talked about a corrupt bargain. He wrote about it. But he went home to Nashville. He followed the rule of law. He went to the White House the night he lost the presidency in what he believed to have been an elite conspiracy. He greeted John Quincy Adams, who was to become the president, and then he came home to Tennessee. And that's as cl close as we get, and that's following the rule of law. And I agree with uh, everything Jason said. I, I would add simply, too, that there's an erosion of a democratic norm here, lowercase d. Uh, we had an event at Vanderbilt tonight uh, with Colin Powell and Madeleine Albright, and they were talking about our domestic political situation. And I asked, uh, you know, if you got a report about a, another country on your way to the seventh floor of the State Department and the president wasn't leaving, you know, what would your assessment be? And where, where our conversation ended up is that might be a nation that would need some nation building. That's kind of where we are. And Jason, also to your point, this tradition, this it's so far been all men, the gentlemanly tradition that the departing president 
uh, will not criticize the sitting president. Some of our more recent presidents have been diligent to a fault about that. There's every reason to believe that Joe Biden will get trolled every day on social media, whether Twitter or Parler or wherever the Trump crowd ends up. Yeah, and, and that's going to be, I think, the, the challenge for the press, right? There's always a reevaluation of things after every election. I, I saw this weekend there was a trending hashtag, decenter Trump, right? What we're going to eventually have to decide on is how much attention can we pay to someone who's going to be weighed down with lawsuits from dozens of things and corrupt actions that he engaged in before he became president of the United States. Donald Trump will complain. Ivanka Trump will complain. Uh, his sons and Jared Kushner will say things about Joe Biden, but they'll have no real power at that particular point. They're, they're not political analysts. They're just an angry oligarchy that's out of power. So I, I think that's the most important thing. But also what I think is critical is this. You know, in the event that Donald Trump tries to establish himself as a media entity, then we'll have to decide how is that covered. If he connects himself to OAN, if he becomes a, a regular at Fox News, do we treat him as just the angry rantings of somebody who was kicked out by the American people, or is he treated as another political voice? And that, that's going to be a challenge in the months ahead as to how we evaluate what he says about the current administration. All you do is leave us with great questions. Thankfully for us, both gentlemen have agreed to stick around as we fit in a break. And coming up, people in search of a Republican profile and courage or something remotely in the ballpark.